Good morning, everybody. I think uh, we have a few more people filing in here, but um, we'll uh, get started. This uh, webinar or this Lunch and Learn is being recorded today. Uh, my name is Nate Andrews, and I'm uh, the PDM product manager here. Um, I'm also an elite application engineer, and I thought it would be fun to take a look at uh, 3D lithophanes and kind of go over how to create them inside, inside SOLIDWORKS and as well as um, what tools you'll have to learn inside SOLIDWORKS to make these things. So I have a ton of these. If you can see in the camera here, I 3D print these and um, you know just take an image and it, you know, just put it on a little pane there. And then once you put light behind it, it starts looking like uh, what you see on the screen here. So I think these things are a lot of fun and uh, I, I find it you know a lot of fun to uh, show as many people as possible a picture of my grandparents from I think the 1960s or early 70s there so um, what I'm going to do is uh, turn off the camera here real quick just to save on any kind of bandwidth and um, then we'll get right into uh, what lithophanes are and how to create them inside SOLIDWORKS so we will go ahead and pop that off and we will get started here. All right, and a quick history lesson here. Um, modern lithophanes, uh, they were produced in, in Europe, uh, in France, I believe it was in the 1820s. Uh, they were actually originally, like you can uh, find them from like ancient Egypt as well. They had some very basic uh, types of lithophanes uh, way back then as well. Um, it comes from the Greek words litho and Fainan, I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced, and it means uh, to cause to appear. Um, early lith lithophanes, one and a half millimeters to six millimeters thick, and I'll explain that a bit further, um, you know, as we get into it. But these need to be thin so that the light can shine through. And here's a little bit of kind of how they work. So you need a backlight. And then uh, I always call it kind of, you know, it's the thickness of your uh, uh, of your resulting lithophane determines the color. If you want to call it color, it's not necessarily color, but um, it's going to kind of give you, like you see down here, kind of a grayscale um, effect. So again, it has to be thin. And if you just conceivably think if you have a, a black light, the thicker material is going to look darker. The thinner material is going to let more light through. So that's the, the very uh, basic uh, principle behind uh, lithophanes here. So inside of SOLIDWORKS, how do you create these? Um, the easiest way that I found, and there are actually a few different ways to do this, but um, with a new tool that came out and I believe it was uh, 2020 uh, SOLIDWORKS, you can just apply an image to a 3D model. And I've just found with playing around with these that a flat or perfectly circular uh, surface works the best for this. Um, if you have, you know, kind of a, a wavy type of surface that it doesn't work quite as well uh, to create these. But the main tool inside SOLIDWORKS is the 3D texture tool. And if you haven't uh, played around with this, we'll show you a little bit about what the tool is, how it works, and, um, you know, just show you how to create a couple of these uh, types of uh, lithophanes here. So with that, I am very short on um, I'm very short on actual PowerPoint today, so we're just going to show you. All right, let's start out with this part here. It's just a circular part. You can see I haven't even saved it or anything. Um, it's just a part, and it's an arc. All it is. So. If you never use this uh, toolbar here, it's under it's on the mesh modeling toolbar uh, automatically, and you're going to see the 3D texture icon right here. Now it is a little smart. It's grayed out right now because the 3D texture requires an image to be put on uh, a surface or on on the part in some way before it's going to even become active. So what I'm going to do is just simply drag and drop an image, put it on the face here, 
And then we're gonna kind of alter how this looks. It looks a little weird on the curved surface here. So let's go over to our appearances. Just gonna right click and edit the appearance. And I do have this set to uh, advanced. I almost always uh, have it set to advanced. And we're gonna take a look at the image mapping here. So in this case, instead of having this kind of tiled on there, I'm just gonna say, you know, fit it to the width and the height. So we see one logo. I hit okay on that. What you'll notice is on that mesh modeling toolbar, the 3D texture is now an available tool. So I'll show you what this looks like in just a moment. One of my favorite things, if you don't know where that, if you don't have the mesh modeling uh, toolbar opened up, you know, you can always come up to the search commands and just start typing in, you know, 3D texture and, it, and it'll just show up down here as well. Okay, let's get into the 3D texture and I'll show you what that looks like and how to use this tool. So I'll click on that. First, you have to select the body, the solid body. So you could have multiple solid bodies here with different images and it's gonna apply uh, this uh, geometry differently. So I'm just clicking on the body. Next, it sees that there's one image on here. So I can select the image. And then you have a couple of different options here. One is convert this texture to 3D, which we are going to do. And the other option is you know, white up, black down, uh, checked on or checked off. So what that generally means is, um, if you think about it, how much light's gonna come through. Um, and really what works well is a high contrasting image. So, you know, lots of, you know, if it's white and you have a black background, that's good contrast, right? Less grays in the middle. So generally I'll say black up meaning that there's less light coming through, which means the resulting lithophane looks, um, you know, looks like the darker images are actually darker or the darker parts of the image are actually darker. So you can already see once we do that, you can see kind of on the screen here, you know, it's actually turning this into, it almost looks like a simulation study to some extent, right? You have all these uh, triangles and, and boxes here. And then it changes direction around the geometry. So you can start to see that coming in now. Now from there, we have to refine this a little bit uh, in some, some way here. So we're gonna take a look at the texture refinement. And for all of these tools, if you just hover over it, you can see that it's giving you kind of an, an, an idea of uh, what that uh, tool is gonna do, all right? So you have texture offset, we'll get to that, and then the maximum element size. So you go to texture refinement, we bump that up a bit. You can now see very easily kind of around that geometry. You know, if we zoom in, it's actually changing the texture itself quite a bit. And that's again, based on the image and the contrast from uh, one image to, or from light to dark on the image. So that's what the texture refinement is doing right there. And it's, it's really kind of looking at the, the image edges, if you will, um, and it's, it's really pulling those out. The offset distance, how high or how far back do you want the actual resulting 3D model? So, and this is actually in real, like if you were to 3D print this, if you put you know, an inch, it means that it's going to pull or push, whichever way you have it, uh, the geometry from the image, out an inch. So um, with a lithophane itself, you're trying to make this um, probably no bigger than a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. It's, it's really, you don't want it to be, you know, anything too uh, drastic really. And as I do that, you can just see it, just, just bump this out here uh, as I made that change. So the next one, maximum element size, again, like I said, it's similar to uh, simulation in the fact that, you know, each of these are called an element that they're just using the, you know, very similar uh, verbiage. Um, so right now, the maximum element size is 90 thousandths. Uh, let's say we go down to 10 thousandths, and this is going to start to uh, make your computer crank a little bit. So. Um, what it's doing is it's actually going to subdivide all of these little triangles into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. 
So now you can see we have like a million of them. So anyone who's worked with a mesh body, what this is doing is actually taking the three, the solid body that we originally had, and it's actually going to change this over to a mesh body. So let's change it out a little bit, make it a little larger so it doesn't uh, crank uh, the computer, uh, have it take off off my desk here. Um, so as we do this, you can kind of see what's going on here, right? And I think that looks okay. What we'll do is hit okay on that. And then I'll show you the result here. So you can see that's the result. And if I kind of click on it, you can also see it all, it's all one kind of box uh, right here. Let me go back to my feature tree and show you what it did. Now that uh, we have the actual uh, 3D texture, we actually did that. We have the solid body and it is hidden. Now we have a graphics body as well. And that's what's showing now on essentially on top of the solid, uh, solid model, the original body. I show that you can kind of lay them on top of each other, right? Hide the graphics body and there's your original uh, geometry again. So what is kind of nice about this though is even if you change this, so this was six inches high, if I go to, I don't know, four, do something like that, rebuild. Uh, probably have to remap the, uh, the image a little bit there, but um, if you go back into your 3D texture, or actually just showing the, the, the graphics here, it did update based on your geometry. But if I go back in here and kind of edit my uh, image again here, It should, should redo it. Let's hide that guy. Oh no, now it's hang, hanging off there. <laughs> uh, some of the fun stuff that you have to work with, uh, just imagery in general. So uh, go back to the mapping here and uh, you can actually do one of, one of these maneuvers here. Just move the, the image itself on the surface, but hit okay. Rebuild that guy. And then we'll have to get back into the 3D texture tool real quick and kind of have it re redo it there. And we'll just say that's good enough and hit OK. So pretty quick and easy um, working with this. As long as you don't make those uh, elements too small and have a billion of them on the screen, uh, this is actually not, um, you know, not too bad to work with. But just think about it. I mean, your computer is starting to crank in your graphics card and everything, trying to crank through all of this uh, uh, geometry now that's on the screen, this graphical information. So from there, this is just a mesh body. Um, as long as your solid body is closed or is hidden, I should say, uh, you can just do a save as and save it as an STL or uh, whatever um, your 3D printer takes uh, for a uh, for a file and then you can just toss it over to the 3d printer and let it go um it is a pretty pretty cool um little tool here so i do want to show a couple of other things as well uh when it comes to the 3d texture tool um there are some built-in uh kind of imagery as well so if you go over to your appearances over here on the in your task pane going under miscellaneous, and then you have 3D textures inside of here already. So, and this just comes with your regular install of SolidWorks. Um, so, and you can kind of see there's a bunch of different ones here. Um, things that people probably use quite a bit is, you know, maybe knurling. So you already have, you know, that kind of imagery built in. So if you're looking to uh, even 3D print something that has you know, in this case, knurling or, um, you know, again, they have all sorts of stuff, treaded plate, um, you know, dimples and things of that nature. And again, these are already built in. So you can see, you know, there's lots of contrast on, on these types of uh, images too. So again, go into the 3D texture, select the image, just kind of that dimple uh, look there. Offset distance and then element size. Yep, 
you can kind of see the, the result in this case of that kind of dimple look is right there. Let's bring that up a bit, right? Make it drastic. So the 3D texture tool is, is pretty neat um, with just some of the geometry you can create. And obviously you can do this on, you know, I, I said it's, it, it works best usually on like a cylindrical, uh, you know, arc, you know, type of surface or a flat surface. Um, you can you can obviously do this on whatever surface that you want. So nothing, uh, um, you know, too crazy on what you can do. Just just realize if you do some sort of wavy surface, you could get some weirdness coming out of the 3D texture, uh, the resulting body itself. But that is um, the 3D texture tool itself. Uh, again, if you come over here, there's all sorts of different uh, types of um, patterns and um, you know just imagery that they uh, have in there automatically. So um, get a little crazy with it. I always like to see what uh, people are are kind of making with this sort of tool. Here, I'm going to see if this will work. I'm going to turn on the camera again. And I want to just see if my light source is uh, working here. Let me see if you can see that. So again, a couple of um, these lithophanes here. It's just the exact same principle as what I just did there. And all you need is a backlight. And I do have a light here. Hopefully this doesn't ruin the... Uh, <laughs> but the light behind it, it's just going to shine through and kind of show you what that image is. And this is an old picture of uh, my kids and Santa from years ago, but just a little black light or uh, backlight, I should say, behind it. And you're creating an image. I, I, I've actually seen where you can uh, go on to you know, an Etsy shop or something like that, people will, um, you know, you can purchase, uh, you know, upload your own image and someone will 3D print it for you as well. So um, there's all sorts of uh, fun things that you can, that you can do with uh, with this stuff and little side business type, type of ideas. Um, yeah, the, so kind of in conclusion with this, the, the nuts and bolts of this whole thing in SolidWorks anyways, is the 3D texture tool. If you're on something older than I believe it was SolidWorks 2020 when it came out, then you'd have to upgrade uh, to be able to have that tool. Um, it is available in all levels of SolidWorks. Um, I don't believe that uh, you have to have professional or premium for it. So um, as long as you have SolidWorks 2020 or newer, you have access to it. And if you haven't really gotten into really working with mesh models, um, there's a lot of good resources on, um, you know, on, uh, mysolowers.com and, uh, on YouTube, you know, all sorts of different places where you can learn about it. Um, but there's in this mesh modeling tab, there's all sorts of different tools. Even if you get a, a, a mesh body in from a vendor or something of that nature, and you need to create a surface model or a solid body out of it, all these tools up here, um, that they've been adding over the last probably three, four releases um, really, really help out. Uh, I know it's not something that everyone uses and has to work with or deal with, but um, you know, when you have to work with it and deal with it, a lot of these uh, tools over here are, are a lot better than what they used to be for sure. So, um, so I'll kind of uh, end it there. If anyone has any questions, you have the chat in there and uh, I can go ahead and answer any questions that you, that you may have. And thanks for stopping by. And I know it's kind of a, a quick one, but it's a really kind of a unique tool that not many people uh, use. And this is just something that um, I've played around with quite a bit in the last uh, few years. And um, I know there's websites you can just, you know, kind of upload your picture and get you know, a STL file out of, but I wanted to figure out how I could do it on my own. 
and uh, this tool came out and it's pretty uh, pretty helpful. Not completely related, but uh, can the three texture tool be used to create paths for a laser engraver? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think part of it would depend on what your laser needs for a file type. What I think I've seen in the past with, uh, especially if you're trying to do um, um, like letters, that sort of thing, uh, I'm pretty sure they do have um, I'm pretty sure they do have uh, just a, uh, uh, was it a stick line uh, font that you can just utilize uh, for that sort of thing. Um, but I think if it, if it comes down to a DXF or something of that nature for the, the laser engraver itself, um, you know, it's gonna, if it's, if it's like a DXF, I mean, using sketching and things of that nature, I don't think the 3D texture would necessarily be the right tool for it. Um, in the example of my grandparents, what material, uh, it was just PLA, uh, for the material on that one. It was, uh, I think I had the thickness, if I recall about, uh, a 16th of an inch. Um, but yeah, it was just PLA. And then I had the dark, uh, kind of patches of the, of the image. I had that being raised up. So if, if you saw that, uh, checkbox, I still have it open here. Yeah, the, the white up black down, I think I had that unchecked. So the the, the darker part of the um, uh, of the image was actually raised. But that was just PLA uh, material. And yeah, if you uh, if you're if you're not quite up to uh, SolidWorks 2020 yet, I'm fairly certain that was the release. I can double check it, but uh, you can always go on online and do uh, you know what's new in SolidWorks. This was one of the highlighted tools uh, that year when it came out. I'm fairly certain it was 2020. But if you're not on uh, 2020 yet and you need to upgrade, um, I mean, always reach out to us. We can help you with the upgrade up, upgrade as well. So um, feel free to reach out when uh, when that time comes. And yeah, I think it's a cool topic too. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I have another one actually that I haven't, uh, I was trying to get this done in time to, uh, to actually have it, uh, have a, a video on there, but, um, I have a, a light up outside the front of my house. So I was just going to create kind of a pane or a panel. I think I need to, um, I need to actually uh, do a little work on this so that the print wasn't as clean as I was hoping. But, um, and I think with the, and this is actually a good, a good segue. Uh, some, some of these colors just look better than others when you're actually putting it, um, you know, having the backlight and stuff. Yellow, not the best color for it. Red looks a lot better. Greens and blues look fairly good. Um, whites aren't too bad. If you have a backlight right behind it, it's not too bad yellow for whatever reason terrible color for it but you learn you learn when you you know when you when you try it uh but anyway i was gonna put this uh kind of as one panel i have a kind of three panels of glass around my uh my light out front and i just wanted to kind of see what this looks like so that's a, a future project at this point um any other questions Hey, thanks for joining. All right, I will uh, close this down if there aren't any other questions um, and the recording, uh, it is going. So we'll have it uh, up on, I think our YouTube channel um, probably later this month, but uh, thanks for joining. I, I agree, I think it's a pretty cool topic, but um, yeah, give it a try and, uh, and, and Show it to the world. Show everyone what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone. Have a good day.